Hi friends, today I'm going to share a few easy crafts you can make with one bag of moss. These are great for springtime decor projects and I think you'll have a lot of fun making them as well. If you're new to my channel, welcome to First Day of Home. I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you'll get notified every time I post on YouTube. I'm also joining a talented group of YouTubers, so be sure to check them out in the playlist below. The first craft is a DIY basket wreath using lavender and a few other flowers. I picked this basket up at Michael's for 50% off, but you can always use a thrifted basket or something you have on hand. I loved this farmhouse ribbon I found also for 50% off at Hobby Lobby, and I'll be using it for a couple of crafts today. To hang my basket, I'll be using this jute twine. You can use any rope or string or pipe cleaner even. Of course, since this is a moss challenge, I'm going to be using this super moss that I found also at Hobby Lobby, but you can also find smaller bags of moss at the dollar store. I picked up a few bunches of lavender and then this white dahlia bunch as well from Michaels. And then I decided to add a couple of stems of this green lamb's ear that I also picked up from Hobby Lobby. You'll want to start by finding a way to hang your wreath, so I just used this piece of jute twine and strung it around the top of my basket. Now I did end up making it a little longer later because I found it was too high up on the door. Before you start making your floral arrangement, you'll want to insert your ribbon inside the basket. That way it's already in place and you don't have to move it around later, especially after we add that moss to this arrangement. You'll notice that I'm actually threading it through the basket here about two inches below the rim of the basket, but I found that it looked a little bit low once I hung it on the door. So I did adjust it and you can always adjust it later if you find the same thing happens with yours. I ended up keeping the tails of my bow quite long because I thought they looked really pretty kind of blowing in the wind and it gave it sort of a wispiness. So you can play around with it. There are all sorts of different kinds of bows you can tie on your arrangement and you be the judge and figure out which one you like best on your door. I'm going to make a simple ribbon here just as you would tie your shoes, nothing fancy, but you can play around again and make a bigger, bolder ribbon if you like. I just love this sweet farmhouse look that's very simple. And I'm going to just make some peaks at the end with this ribbon on both of the tails of my ribbon. And after just some simple adjusting, we're ready to move on to the main meat of this project, which is inserting our moss and florals. Here's how the sheet of moss comes out of the package. And you can see there's a green side, and in a moment I'll show you that there's a back side or a brown side to the moss. So I want the green part to show for the best contrast against this brown basket. And I'm just going to adjust it and try to get all the way down to the peak of this basket so that none of the door will show through. And if you find it's tough to get it all the way down in that peak, you can always just kind of push the moss through that tip with your fingers. What's nice about this moss is it just gives such a natural look to this wreath. So even if a little bit is sticking out, that's okay. Here you can see that brown side peeking through and that would look fine, but I again just think it looks a little prettier with the green part sticking out. So I'm trying to arrange it so that that flat green side is pointing outward. You might also find it useful to flip your basket over and let gravity help you out and start to fill in those top parts of the basket. This is looking really good now. You can also use coconut liner as an option, but again, this challenge today is all about using moss and I really love the way this is looking already. I'm going to start with that fuzzy green lamb's ear stem and start to place it, but it's a little bit long, so I'm gonna trim it down. And I used two of these stems for this project, but I actually think I could have used three because I think this arrangement needed a little bit more green. So if you're starting from scratch, you may want to use the rule of three and go ahead and get three stems of this lamb's ear or whatever stem you want to use in the back. Mm -hmm. 
There's nothing really special you have to do as you insert these into your basket, but if you would like, you can always secure them with some wire on the back of your basket, because remember, we did not put moss on the back of this arrangement, so you can always use wire to secure them in place. I'm going to do the same thing with my lavender and just insert it into the basket. I did have two bunches of this really nice full lavender and it didn't even have to be trimmed down, which is amazing because usually you have to trim every stem for an arrangement. So these just fit really perfectly inside the cone. You might have to do a little rearranging of the moss to make sure the stems are not poking through or showing through the basket, but that's about it. And then finally we'll add our dahlia bunch and I didn't even bother trimming this down. It was just one bunch that fit really nicely inside. And that's it. This is the easiest wreath I have ever made. And it's so simple, but it looks so pretty and sweet on a door. And I'll show you just a moment what that looks like. Um, if you see some little holes or places where you can see the stems through, you can add a little bit of moss, but that's it. This is super quick and easy, and I just love the way that this looks for the spring on my door. I'm calling this next project my mini bird's nest wreath. I'm going to use that same moss that we used in the last craft, as well as these floral stems that I found at Dollar Tree last spring. I'll start by trimming off this little jute twine off of these mini wreaths that I found at Hobby Lobby, and I'll save this twine because you can always use it later. I'll be adding the moss around the entire wreath form, and I'm just going to break off a few pieces to get started. Again, I want the green part facing outward just because I think it creates more contrast and looks just a little bit prettier. I did want to point out that piece of twine that we set aside, you can always add that on and make this like a little ornament or a little mini wreath to hang on a candle or some other decor. So you can do that before you add the moss or you could do it after. Now there is kind of a flatter side of this little mini wreath and a more textured side. So I'm gluing my moss on the flatter side of this wreath, but you can do either. I'm just using my hot glue and gluing on portions of the moss all the way around this little grapevine wreath. And I'm not too worried if some of the moss is sticking out because I can always take a pair of scissors and just give it a haircut later and trim that right off. So don't worry too much about how it looks just yet. Your main goal is just to get the moss all the way around. Once you have the moss completely covering the wreath, you can take your scissors and just give it a little trim around the edges. And this is really just up to your judgment. However you want it to look, if you want it a little more wild and crazy, you can skip this step. But if you want it to look a little neater and cleaner, you can always go around and fix it up with adding a little more moss or taking some away. For a little extra cuteness, I'm taking a few little blooms from my Dollar Tree floral stems and just bunching them together and attaching them to my wreath with hot glue. As I was making these, I thought how cute would these be as little name card holders on a spring table? So all you would do is take some floral wire or some other thick wire, which you can also find at Dollar Tree, and just wrap it around your wreath sticking up. And then you could just put your little name card in there and I think it would look so sweet. I'm going to pop a little picture in here of an example from my fall tablescape so you can get a picture of what I mean. I felt my little wreath needed just a touch of something a little more rustic, so I took some of that jute twine that I used for the first wreath, and I just wrapped it around a few times. It's just a little simple accent that I think gives it a little more charm and character. You'll wanna just hot glue the ends in place. And by the way, you can add anything you want to this wreath. You could add little pearls or pom-poms and you get the kids involved and just have them use tacky glue instead of hot glue so it's a little bit safer. And I think they would just have a blast making their own little mini wreaths for the season. It's a great Easter activity for the kids. And 
it really allows them to kind of show their own personalities and have some fun with it. I decided to add this little speckled egg inside, which makes it look like a bird's nest. And I'm going to put a link to a video where I show you how to make those speckled eggs. This is a great Easter craft and a wonderful little accent for the spring season. The final craft is making moss bunny art. Now I had these dollar store frames on hand and I had used them as wedding table numbers and the frames are still perfectly good. I still have the backing for them. So I'm going to repurpose these and just remove the vinyl lettering on here. This was removable vinyl and I used my Cameo to cut it out. So it easily peels off and I'm going to take that off as well as the pressed flowers on the back. These had been applied with Mod Podge so they come off pretty easily and I just gave it a quick washing to get the clear glass separated. You might remember this white chalk paint from my last tutorial where I made some DIY cake stands. And I always like to point it out when I'm using the same paint because it might seem like a big purchase to buy some of these craft supplies, but I like to show you how to use them over and over again. So I'm just going to paint one side of the glass and I'm going to start with one coat and make sure you get it on there pretty well. The bottle says to wait about two hours in between coats, but I actually find that it dries much more quickly than that, especially if you're just applying a thin coat. So just check it out after about an hour or an hour and a half before you apply that second coat. And here's what it looks like after two coats. Now you have a choice here. You can use the shiny side or this matte side. I think the matte side looks really good for this particular moss bunny. And I've got my bunny cutouts, which I will put a link to below. I just created these on my Silhouette Cameo software. And we're going to be applying the moss to this bunny shape, just like we did with the wreath in the last craft. So I'm just using my glue gun to very carefully apply some hot glue and then apply the moss in sections. It's very similar to the last little mini wreath craft that we did. Again, you can go ahead and apply a big chunk of moss onto this bunny because we are going to trim him down later, so it doesn't matter if it extends a little bit beyond the form. We're gonna clean him up and give him a haircut when we're done. You know, we're making this guy a flat little bunny for the purpose of this frame, but you can also do this with a three-dimensional bunny and just have it out as a little statue for your Easter decor or on a table and it would look super cute. So lots of ideas here. I just love seeing those moss covered animals and they're so trendy right now. So play around with it and have some fun. Let me know what you end up wanting to do. Once you have your bunny all covered in moss, I find it easiest to turn them over and then trim with the paper side up because then you can really see the outline and make sure that you're getting some of that detail back, especially around the legs and the tail. You do want to be able to see that it is a bunny and not just a big lump of moss in a frame. So this is where you really wanna groom your bunny a little bit and give him some character. And we're gonna add some accessories in just a minute to make him even cuter. Here's a look at the other bunny all covered in moss. I would love to know which one you like the best and which one you plan to use for your Easter crafts. Now I did say we were going to add some accessories. So I'm using that ribbon from the first wreath that we made, that basket wreath on the front door. And I'm just going to make a little bow tie for my bunny. And I'm doing a very simple method of just scrunching up the ribbon and then adding another piece of ribbon in the center to make it look like a bow tie. You can tie a traditional bow or do anything you like. And I think any accessories you wanna add will just look adorable. And again, this is where you can really use your creativity and express yourself on your little moss bunny. One little dab of hot glue is all you need to complete this look. And you could also do a his and hers bunny with a little ribbon in the ears. There's so much you could do with this and I think it would just be so fun to have a whole family of little moss bunnies. So to attach your bunny to the glass of the frame, you're just going to again apply some hot glue on the back and center it wherever you want. Just make sure that your frame or your glass is all cleaned off so you don't get random fragments stuck underneath. And all you have left to do is attach the gold frame to the outside and you're ready to go. 
Now, I did think about painting the frame or even doing a little decoupage with a pretty pattern that I just got that I'm really excited to share with you in a future tutorial. But I think the gold frame looks very nice as it is. And again, I purchased this at Dollar Tree. You can get a bunch of these and do a whole little family, like I said, or do different types of moss Easter crafts. Well, I hope this gave you some ideas of different ways you can use moss this season. It's such an easy material to work with. And don't forget, my friends have more moss tutorials for you in the playlist below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment. Let me know which of these crafts you plan to make. You can find more projects like this on my blog at firstdayofhome.com. I'll see you next time.